Hello all, and welcome to tonight's beer review, which I am dubbing the One First Week of Unemployment Review. But um, it's a pretty good likelihood I'm going to be starting at least a temporary job that will fill up the next two or three weeks uh, starting next week. And amazingly, a temporary job, if I get the full 40 hours, would pay better than what I was doing before. So, who knows? Still not much, but that's life. For those of you who even give a shit about my personal life, that is. Anyways, the beer we'll be reviewing this Saturday night is the Sierra Nevada 2015 Southern Hemisphere Harvest Single... No, Fresh Hop IPA. Now, this is brewed with fresh hops, which means hops have not been dry, freeze-dried, and then uh, rehydrated during the boil process. They're fresh-picked hops. Out of season right now, so where do they get them? From the Southern Hemisphere, usually Tasmania, Southern Australia, or New Zealand. I kind of wonder if they can grow hops in Southern Africa. That would be a kind of an interesting thing to go and try, but that's neither here nor there. So, let's go and read the bottle, shall we? The second in our 2015 Harvest series, Southern Hemisphere Harvest features fresh New Zealand hops, floral, citrusy, and intense, flown straight to the brewery days after growers picked them. We're devoted to whole cone hops, and we're always on the hunt for rare and exciting hop flavors. Mirroring the fall USA, the fall U.S. harvest, New Zealand hops peak during our spring. During our spring, Southern Hemisphere, the second in our five bottle harvest series, harvest series, highlights floral, citrus, and fruity aromas from fresh hops picked, dried, and shipped halfway across the world and into our brew kettle in one week. Drink this IPA fresh and watch for the rest of the series that explores diverse hopping methods, diverse hopping methods, single hop, fresh hop, wet hop, and wild hop. So this was packaged for 27.15, so it's barely a month old. Well, month and a half, really. And it's, uh, so it's going to be nice and bright, you know, it's going to be really fresh both as a fresh hop and as a freshly made beer. 6.7 ABV, so this ought to get you pretty well plastered. Enough with the yammering. <clears throat> Let's get to the drinking. Ooh. Going to give us a fairly vigorous head. For well, a vigorous head is what's needed to go and get a proper aeration of a beer. So, a nice caramel orange color, you can see from here. Very dark orange, almost brown. Somewhat uh, translucent. My, almost transparent though, with a thick yellowish beige head. Got kind of sweet citrus here, almost like marmalade -y kind of flavors. Not really marmalade, -y, but uh, you know, something like Seville oranges. Fresh mown hay. And with biscuity malts underneath, you kind of get a sense of the malts too. Apricots. Not much in the way of pineness or pine resin, at least in the nose. Not much skunk either. It's definitely more towards the fruity side of the equation. Hints of florals too. You know, that sort of um, 
hay-like grassiness and florals. It's a little bit more reminiscent of Old World than New World, but it's definitely a lot of that New World sort of citrus fruitiness there. A little bit too cold right now. Um, recently got a new refrigerator, so it tends to over... My old refrigerator was actually not good. It was great for beer because it would definitely have everything at around 52 degrees, so by the time we poured it out, it was at the perfect temperature. Um, but it wasn't so great if you were storing meat. <laughs> so, now it's a little bit too cold for beer. I kind of forgot I should have let this warm up about 10 minutes. We'll do our best, shall we? Nicely bitter finish. Very much of that grapefruit rind. It lasts, but it's not overpowering. It doesn't feel like it's, um, like it's that. Well, actually, yeah, it, it does stay on the palate. It's still there. It's just kind of nuanced, you know. It's not overpowering. It doesn't feel like your mouth has gotten uh, coated with pine tar. Malts in the front are fairly thick. Almost um, very sweet. Well, I'm not going to say sweet for the style. Kind of on the bready side. Um, almost like a sweet bread. And that is sort of the backbone underneath the... sweetness there's a lot of juiciness there but it's sort of balanced by um, uh, a little bit of pine resininess in the front and <clears throat> yeah definitely as it warms up that finish is getting a lot stronger Whew. yeah so um, initial strong grapefruit rind element to that you know that rind zest element goes into straight uh, pine resin pine resin sort of feeling uh, lasting distinct hot bitterness in that finish front is fairly sweet as I say I stated before I'm trying to get what is happening in the mid palate. Definitely an effervescent floralness to the mid palate. But that's sort of subdued. Very strong mouthfeel to this as I'm uh, as it starts to warm up a little bit. Quite carbonated for the style. You can definitely tell it's fresh. Um, it has that very heavy bitterness that tells you that it's a fresh IPA and that it is a fresh hot IPA. All those alpha oils still very intact. It's showing up in the finish right now. Alpha oils are what makes that bitterness so intense and so lasting. And when it's fresh, hopped, and uh, pretty freshly made, you'll definitely know it. Yeah. <clears throat> a 
kind of a caramel element to the hops, to the uh, malts there. Again, real hop show. Malts are just there to be a backbone to support the hops. As it warms up, that sort of zest that, um, I'm going to call it grapefruit zest because, you know, it kind of mixes in with that sort of grapefruit, like uh, citrus note, Z uh, you know, uh, citrus zest, bitterness, grapefruit zest from start to finish. Ooh. Yeah, and as it's warming, as it's warming up, ooh, it is, that bitterness is just kicking up notches, man. It's just kicking up notches. Sort of nice. To be honest, the only really strong Southern Hemisphere aspect I'm getting to this is a sort of floralness to the hops that you don't really get with the Northwestern ones, but other than that, it's full on smack in the face, resin on the tongue. Pine resin on the tongue, sort of um, IPA. So, am I going to buy this again? Excuse me. Very carbonated, by the way. Would I buy this again? Likely not. I'm kind of getting, you know, honestly, I'm sort of getting beyond this sort of hot bombs, nuclear hot bomb style. I want to drink more light-bodied, more refreshing, more delicate sort of styles. I don't really want to go and nuke my taste buds anymore. That said, is this a bad beer? By all means, no. This is actually a pretty good example of a Southern Hemisphere style. Um, you know? If you're a hophead and you like annihilating your taste buds with uh, hop oil bitterness, well, man, you, you want an example of really damn fresh hops? This is really damn fresh. It tastes super fresh. So, hop heads, love fresh hops, love freshly made beer. Go out and have yourself, go out and get yourself a bottle right now and have yourself uh, a hoppy June. <laughs> As for myself, meh. I'm going to pick up some Kolsch's, some Pilsner's, some Goze's. Um, maybe some extra special bitters, you know, and just have myself a little bit more of a lighter experience, because that's just the way I'm starting to roll nowadays, eh? But that said, not a bad beer. IPA lovers, hopheads, have at it. That's your beer review for tonight, folks. Cheers, and good night, mate.